Have you ever known someone with a serious anger problem? Someone who seems like a ticking time bomb, ready to explode? Now imagine that person has a history of violent crime. Without intervention, they could re-offend, causing harm to others and ending up back behind bars. So how do we stop that? from happening. Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. In this video, we're diving into anger management. We'll explore how it works, why it's used, and most importantly, whether it actually prevents reoffending. Because if it doesn't, what's the alternative? But before we dive in, if you're studying A-level psychology and want to master psychology, consider joining Bear It In Mind, where you'll find access to loads of resources that have helped students go on to achieve the highest grades. Head to the link in the description below to find out more. Anger management focuses on changing the way a criminal thinks. Anger management comes from cognitive psychology. It's all about internal mental processes. The idea is that if anger fuels their offending, then changing the way they think about anger can help change their behavior. But what exactly is wrong with the way some offenders think and how can therapy change that? There are three key stages to an anger management program and to help illustrate them, I want to share the story of a student I once worked with, let's call him Jack. When I finished my psychology degree, I got a job at a high school where my role was to specifically help boys with educational challenges. That's where I met Jack, a 14 year old boy who was physically imposing, already towering at six foot two in year 10. But his temper often made him the center of attention for all the wrong reasons. It didn't take long to notice that Jack was easily provoked and the other students had learned exactly how to push his buttons. One day during registration, an incident put Jack's temper to the test. A staff member accused him of slamming a door and breaking the glass. Instantly, Jack's anger took over. He swore at the teacher, his body tensed, and in frustration, he punched the side of a filing cabinet before storming out the room. Ironically, this time as he stormed out the room, he did break the glass in the door, the one he slammed behind him as he stormed out. But here's the thing, Jack hadn't actually broken the original door he was accused of damaging. Instead of taking a moment to process the situation, asking, when did this happen? Why do you think it was me? Or even pointing out that he had been with me at the time, Jack let his emotions dictate his response. His anger clouded his ability to defend himself rationally. Jack's reaction was a clear example of difficulty managing anger. But what was wrong with the way he was thinking? And more importantly, how could anger management help him change that? The first stage is cognitive preparation. This is all about building awareness of anger and its triggers. Think of anger like a ticking time bomb. Your triggers are the spark that ignites the explosion. Cognitive preparation would involve understanding anger. Offenders need to be taught about the physiological, emotional, and psychological aspects of anger. Recognizing triggers. Offenders are guided to identify specific stresses or triggers that provoke their anger. This stage helps them to develop insight into what causes their anger to escalate. No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Identifying distorted thinking. Here, an offender needs to learn to identify their irrational thoughts, such as, everyone's out to get me, or if I don't stand up for myself aggressively, I'm weak. This is where the real work begins. If anger is like a ticking time bomb, this stage is about lengthening the fuse, giving individuals more time to respond calmly before they explode. Offenders could be taught practical strategies, such as cognitive restructuring, replacing aggressive thoughts like, I need to fight back, with more rational ones like, I can stay in control without violence. Problem solving skills. Learning to handle conflict constructively instead of reacting impulsively, such as by practicing assertive rather than aggressive responses to conflict. Relaxation techniques. Using deep breathing and mindfulness to calm themselves down in frustrating situations. 
Now that individuals have learned the skills, they need to put them into action. This stage involves gradual exposure to triggers, facing real life stresses in controlled environments, practicing staying calm under pressure, feedback and refinement receiving guidance from therapists and peers to fine tune their responses. By the end of an anger management program, individuals like Jack have the tools to handle stressful situations without resorting to aggression. Sounds great, right? But does it actually work? One study that explored the effectiveness of anger management in offenders was conducted by Ireland in 2004. The study focused on 50 young male offenders who were divided into two groups. The intervention group, who participated in an anger management program designed to help them develop strategies for staying calm, thinking before reacting, and handling anger more constructively. And the control group, who received no training, allowing researchers to compare the effects of the intervention. To measure changes in anger, Anger and aggression, both groups completed two assessments, a self-report questionnaire where offenders rated their own anger levels, and an observational checklist completed by prison officers, which recorded incidents of angry or aggressive behaviour. These assessments were conducted two weeks before the intervention, and again eight weeks after. So what did they find? Well, offenders who completed the anger management program showed significant reductions in self-reported anger, and were involved in fewer aggressive incidents compared to those in the control group. Many participants maintained these improvements even after the program ended, suggesting that the strategies learned had lasting effects. This study provides strong evidence that anger management interventions can be effective, particularly for offenders whose crimes are linked to aggression. However, whilst anger management has its clear benefits, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Let's now compare anger management with the other way of dealing with offenders we covered in the last video, behaviour modification. Firstly, anger management can be praised for focusing on long-term emotional and behavioural change. This is because if the root cause of the offending is based on their anger issues, fixing this can lead to lasting change because they have changed and giving offenders tools they can continue using after the program ends. In contrast, because behavior modification relies on rewards and punishments, its effectiveness may be short term. Once the external reinforcement stops, there's a risk that all behaviours will return. Therefore, anger management could be argued to be superior as a way of dealing with offenders because it can potentially lead to reducing recidivism in the long term, rather than the temporary change that comes from behaviour modification. Secondly, however, whilst anger management shows promise, its success heavily relies on the willingness of the offender. This is because if an individual is not motivated to change or address their issues, the techniques taught in the program may fall flat. On the other hand, behaviour modification works through external rewards and consequences, meaning an offender doesn't need to be personally motivated for it to have an effect. They follow the system because of the reinforcement, not necessarily because they want to change. This means that without a personal commitment to change, even the best designed anger management programmes may have little impact meaning it may be ineffective for a significant number of offenders. Finally, a significant challenge to the use of anger management relates to resources. This is because delivering this type of intervention typically requires trained therapists who are skilled in cognitive therapy techniques. This reliance on specialised professionals not only increases the cost, but also requires a lot of time from the therapists and the offenders. Even a programme with proven potential to reduce violence and and enhance public safety may remain underused, ultimately limiting its overall impact. But dealing with criminals isn't just about punishment, it's about breaking the cycle. So is teaching offenders to manage their anger enough, or is there a better way to deal with crime? One alternative is restorative justice, a completely different approach that brings offenders face to face with their victims. To watch that video, you can click the video on the screen now or link below. And for more resources related to psychology, check out the Bear It In Mind website.